He said, uh, uh, you couldn't be around him. He said, he is so bold, he'd absolutely scare you. You want to just hide. <laughs> Somebody's kinfolks died, and the somebody was part of his church, but the guy that died was not, but he said out of respect, they wanted him as their pastor to, you know, come over and, and shake everybody's hand or whatever you're going to do. And, and, they, and it wasn't, it wasn't at the funeral that they, they had placed the body, took, they took the body ho- to, the, to this person's home. And it had been set, uh, like, you know, like someone in state. And they, he was inside this little, uh, this little dining type of a separated area there. And they had two glass French doors and the doors were closed. And the coffin and the guy in it is in there behind those glass doors and they're closed. Well, Mr. Wigglesworth went along. He don't know any of these people. But this friend of mine sure did. He's pastor of this church. And he said they walked in there, and Mr. Wigglesworth didn't say anything to anybody. He just walked in the door. And he looked around and just walked through that glass doors and shut them behind him, but everybody in there could see him. And dear Lord, Mr. Wigglesworth would shout, you you hear him for blocks. He shouted hallelujah on the foredeck of the Queen Mary one time. And everybody, you know, doing their singing and their, you know, all their stuff. And everybody stopped to see what it was. The anointing come on that man. You could hear him for blocks. And he just walked in there and walked up to that coffin and pulled that stiff out of there. Pull that dead man out of that coffin. And Brother Charles told me, he said, Oh, I'm telling you right. He said, I never wanted to run so bad in all my life. And he said, What am I going to do? I can't get out of there. He said, I, I, I was speechless. And said, he, he pulled him out of that box and stood him up in the corner. Stood him up there and backed off two or three steps and said, In the name of Jesus, walk! And the thing started sliding and slid down the wall. He walked over there and got it, picked it up, stuck it back up in the corner. And he backed off again. In the name of Jesus! And the thing started sliding down the wall. He walked over there and he said he picked that thing up and said he slammed it into the wall. I said, by God, walk. And the guy, and the two of them come walking out. That was what Jesus did at the tomb of Lazarus. Roll a stone away from the door. And everybody said, oh, no, oh, oh. he stinks, don't you know? You can't do nothing now. He already stinks. I had a guy tell me one time, said, Brother Copeland, uh, he just knew I was going to do this Wigglesworth thing at his wife's funeral. And he kind of, he kind of sighed it up to me. And I was just standing over there. I wasn't even sitting down. The service was already going. And he kind of sighed it up for next to me. He said, now, no, Brother Copeland. I said, yeah. He said, uh, and he's poking me on the... Now, Brother Copeland. I said, yeah, what? <laughs> She's already been embalmed. <laughs> So, that makes a difference. We'll get you one ain't even cooled off yet and see what you can do with it. Being in bond, hey, that's the least of your problems, brother, when it comes to raising the dead. Whoa! <laughs> oh, man, that ain't nothing but the Babylonian mind in high gear. She's been in bond, <laughs> dear God. Oh, brother. But the thing that he pointed out, and I had this happen to me, 
When he, the thing he pointed out, he said, they come walking together out of there. And he said, it scared everybody so bad, they didn't want to talk to neither one of them. <laughs> that fearless boldness you can't fake it they ain't enough, <laughs> there's not enough lung power in this room all put together to roar command authority like Jesus at the tomb of Lazarus. Somebody said it's a good thing he called his name because if he hadn't, he'd have emptied that graveyard. <laughs> Lazarus, come forth! The man was bound. They, they practiced uh, mummification. He, he, he was bound. The power of his words not only put life back into Lazarus, it picked him up in that tomb and lifted him up and stood him in the door and the man couldn't walk. Then he said, unbind him and let him go. You can't fake that. 